I just got back from an awesome trip visiting family in California, both in the southern and northern regions across two different airports. And after the crazy meltdown that Southwest Airlines went through, my flight being one of the ones affected, I had to fly Spirit Airlines for the first time ever. And I'm going to tell you all about my experience and several things that you must know before you decide to fly yourself. So let's go head on over to my computer and I'll give you the rundown of some really helpful tips based on my own experience flying Spirit. Okay, so the first thing that you have to know is that Spirit Spirit is an ultra low cost carrier and it's very important to understand what that actually means. So you are paying whenever you buy a ticket for the airfare and that's it. Also everything else that you may want to add on is an extra cost and third here the prices go up the longer you wait and the heavier the bag. So some pro tips for you all. The first of which is to set your expectations. If you really have high expectations and you kind of compare them to your normal experience on United, American, Delta, or whatever, you're probably going to be very frustrated and disappointed. But again, once you understand that this is a low cost business model for the transportation industry, where there are no frills and everything else costs extra, basically like an a la carte type of model, then you'll be able to go into this and not get super frustrated. Next, plan what you need. So if you have to have a personal item with a carry-on and a check-in, maybe you're traveling with more people, they may or may not have a need for their own check bags. Perhaps you were not able to grab lunch or breakfast or whatever, and you wanna have some snacks in flight. Uh, just keep in mind all those things that you may uh, want for your own convenience and of course for the amount of stuff you're traveling with and then you can go into it knowing all right I got some additional fees to pay and then it won't be a big deal and third pay for all the extras you might need up front during the booking process online because if you wait till you show up at the airport all those little uh, add-ons will cost you more money you might have to wait in line longer and of course it'll take longer to process all your purchases so to save stress save time and save money, do it all up front. Thing to know number two, with Spirit, there's an eight step booking process. And you can see a screenshot that I took from the website right here, starting with searching for your flight and ending with the confirmation and all those intermediate steps in between there. Um, just realize that this of course could change in the future if you're watching this video months or years from now, but uh, whatever their flow is, they typically follow the model of uh, you begin your search and add on parts to your flight and taking care of each step on a separate screen. That way you build out your full itinerary and at the very end you pay for all the stuff that you selected. So what we're gonna do now actually is go through all those steps very briefly that we can see what's involved and know what to expect if you decide to fly Spirit yourself. Step number one is to of course search for a flight and it functions like pretty much any other website out there. You put your from and your to plus the depart date. Also select if it's a one way or, or a round trip flight and how many adults or other people are traveling with you, then click on the search button. You can also select uh, show fares and points if you want to see the reward rates up front too. And yes, you can also do the bundle and save option, which puts your flight and a hotel into one package. You can also search for hotels individually, rental cars individually, and cruises. Once you submit your search, you'll then actually see two different prices. The first is standard pricing, pretty itself explanatory there. And the second is called save Club, and that's an annual membership offering discounts on flights, bads, seats, and more. And you can pay for your uh, overall itinerary that you build here in dollars, that is all cash, or all in points, or a blend of points and cash. So on the screenshot here, you can see the standard price to the left in the gray background and the Savers Club on the right with the yellow background. And then above that, you can have your little toggle switches to show the fares in dollars, points, or the hybrid of points plus cash. And for those of you who may be curious about that Savers Club program, right now there are three different types of memberships. The first is for 12 months, roughly 70 bucks. 18 months will cost you about 100, and a 24 month membership is roughly 130. So of course, the longer the time, you get uh, some slight discounts uh, along the way. Moving on to step number two, which is to pick a bundle. And a few pro tips here, the prices for these bundles can vary by itinerary. So of course, a longer cross country flight might have higher prices than a shorter flight. And also all the prices that you see here are per person, per way. So on the screenshot here, you can see the three different tiers of the bundles, beginning with book it then going up to just for you and ending with bundle it and the higher you go up the more perks you get the different uh, available options that you can choose from here are the personal item being included the option to pick your own seat uh, shortcut the boarding process 
one jet bag, one carry-on bag, and then the flight flats. That allows you to modify your flight once for free, just pay the difference in the airfare cost. So choose which one is right for you. Of course, the book it option on the left is included for no additional cost, is basically adding nothing. Uh, then you can add additional a la carte options as you move through the process if you want. Just realize that if you like several of these perks, it'll probably save you money to bundle them now versus a la carte later in the process. Step three, enter the passenger info. And this is very straightforward. You do this on any other website whenever you book a flight. So enter your name, your known travel number, your date of birth, all your personal content info. You can do this as a guest and not have an account or if you already have an account with Spirit, you can log in, a lot of that should be pre-populated for you, or you can actually join during the booking process as you scroll down and become a member of their free Spirit program. On to step number four, which is to select your bag options. Now for a few pro tips here, one personal item is always included with Spirit flights. That's basically a small purse, briefcase, or backpack that fits underneath the seat in front of you. Moving up in size, if you wanna bring one carry-on bag, that will be for an extra fee, and then the largest bag, those check bags, you can have up to five of those, and those are also for an extra fee. Now, you might be surprised to learn that the carry-on bag actually costs more than the check bag, and that's just the case here on the screenshot. On this sample itinerary that I'm building here, you can see that the one carry-on bag is $58, and then the check bag is $48, so $10 less to check. So if cost savings is your thing, then you wanna definitely check, but if convenience is your thing, then you'll definitely wanna pay a little bit more for the carry-on. Also, if you do pay for that carry-on, it will give you zone one boarding that we can get on the plane faster and get access to those overhead bins and of course settle in maybe with some less stress too. Once more, you can save by paying upfront during this booking process or by bundling on step two that we saw earlier if you wanna have multiple parts, for example, and or via that savers club in case you wanna become a member, maybe if you fly Spirit uh, multiple times throughout the year. Also, and there at the very bottom, you must comply with these size and weight rules. They're uh, laid out very simply here uh, during the booking process. You can see them there on the screen. All the dimensions and the weights are listed there. And even at the airport, they even have those like sizing bins where you can put your luggage in and see if it fits, including handles and including the wheels. Step number five is to choose your seats. And I'm going to make this a lot bigger here on the screen that we can see what's going on here. So first of all, there's this concept called the big front seat. You can see that color in uh, like turquoise or teal. There are eight of them there at the front of the plane. So that's the first benefit of the big front seat. You're at the very front. There also is going to be a lot more legroom for you, plus the much wider seats and they're more padded and more comfortable. So those are like basically first class seats without first class amenities. Below that we have the yellow color, which is their premium seats. Pretty much those are going to be the emergency exit rows. They are standard seats, nothing special about them other than that they are going to give you extra leg room. And then below that in the white color, those are just the regular standard seats with zero extra benefits. Regardless of which seat type you select, you will have to pay to choose your seat. However, if you'd rather save on that cost and just have Spirit assign you a seat randomly, you can skip the step entirely, pay zero dollars, and then figure out what it is once you get to the airport. Continuing on now to step number six, which is to choose your options. For the pro tips here, there is no seat back entertainment, so be sure to have your phone, your tablet, your laptop, whatever it is, if you wanna watch a show, movie, etc. Now with all these additional extras that you can buy, you wanna purchase now to save, because like everything else we talked about before, uh, there will be a higher price uh, at the airport or in flight. So you can choose here from uh, in-flight Wi-Fi, the flight flex option, which allows you to modify your flight for free up to 24 hours prior to departure. You can also skip through security, giving you access to a special dedicated lane, and also get on board faster with zone two boarding. And to give you an example of some of the cost savings, you can see here on the screenshot that the onboard Wi-Fi is $3.99 per device. However, when I was in flight and I pulled out my cell phone and then looked at their pricing options for Wi-Fi there, I saw it was $6.99 for the uh, standard plan there, or $9. 99 for the higher speed for streaming. So just realize that again, it's much better to pay it up front if you know you'll want it. Otherwise, if you want it later, well, be prepared to open up your wall a little bit wider. And last, step seven through eight is to pay and confirm. 
At this page, you can also add insurance to cover things like trip cancellations, trip interruptions, missed connections, trip delay, as well as coverage for baggage and personal effects. And you can also pay via PayPal, which is great to know in case you have one of those rotating quarterly category credit cards like the Chase Freedom Flex, where the 5% category for a given quarter of the year might actually be PayPal. Now on to the third thing to know, which is that the mobile app is awesome. Download it, sign up for an account, get it, use it. It is extremely helpful. I took four screenshots here of the different tabs there at the bottom menu. That first tab called My Trips shows you all the relevant info that you need for your upcoming flights, as well as the ability to view your boarding pass right there on the spot. It's also mobile wallet compatible if you want to add it to something like the wallet app on your iPhone for instance. The book tab does exactly what it says, allows you to book a flight. The flight status tab also does exactly what it says to monitor the status of your flight or any other flight that you might be tracking, for instance. And that last tab called account allows you to see your progress toward elite status, how many reward points you have to redeem for free flights, all the other stuff like your profile, other settings that you might want to modify, like putting your TSA pre-check number on file, all that stuff is right there on the account. Thing to know number four, which is that their loyalty program is called Free Spirit. And it's a pretty simple program overall. There are just two main tiers called Silver Members and Gold Members. There's also a credit card that goes with the program to help you earn points and status faster. So just for your own reference, here's a screenshot of the different benefits at the different tiers. Free Spirit there in the first left-hand column in black is the you know free level that you get just from signing up for the program. Then as you earn silver status, you get access to a lot more benefits. And then gold status is their top tier right now with even more benefits. And as you'll notice here, uh, the gold level in particular gives you things like a free carry-on bag, a first free checked bag, free drinks and snacks on board, flight flats to be able to change your itinerary without paying additional fees, uh, seat selections, shortcut boarding and security, all that stuff there, basically all the add-on fees you normally have to pay are fully waived. For that reason, if you anticipate flying Spirit quite frequently throughout the year, you might really want to focus on earning status with them to start waiving all these fees. And one of the ways to help you earn status even faster is with their credit card, which is called the Free Spirit Travel More World Elite MasterCard. Now, this video is not an in-depth review of this card. We'll save that for another time. But for now, if you want to pause this and just look over some of these main benefits, you definitely can do so. And we'll wrap things up here with thing to know number five, in that it's not all perfect with Spirit. Airlines. As great as my experience was, here are a few pictures here that kind of illustrate some of the downsides of it all. First is that seat back pocket, which is definitely not a pocket. So if you like to store things like a tablet, laptop, um, snacks, water bottles, it's going to be quite challenging to do so with just a few kind of woven pieces of cord there on the back of the seat. Also, I found the seat comfort to just be okay. The cushion underneath you is decent and the one on your back side is uh, less than great. So just something to be aware of. I'm sure their big seat up front there is much, much better but for the standard seats, it's nothing to really be excited about. Also, the check-in lines to drop off your bag and check in at the front part before you even go through security, those can get quite long, so be aware of that. You probably wanna to get to the airport a bit on the early side. And there are no free snacks or coffee on board. As part of being a low-cost carrier, so if you want any of those things, you will have to be prepared to pay out of pocket. Uh, for the flight here that I took on their menu, which you can also see in their mobile app, by the way, it was $3 for tea, $4 for coffee, and also four bucks for hot chocolate. Um, so again, be aware that you have to pay for that stuff. Some of their snacks and drinks for purchase, however, are actually quite decent. So if you're hungry, it could be worth paying for, especially if you didn't have time to grab something before your flight. And with all that said, if you enjoyed today's video and believe it could benefit other people, then please help me get it in front of them by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on those notifications. Also check out the links down below in the description area to earn some more cash back when you shop online through Rakuten, and to view my site with some great credit card offers that I've organized into different categories to help you find the cards that you like best. I thank you all for watching today's video. Hope it brought you some great value. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And while you're waiting on my next upload, always remember that you are great.